start one or the other and then put David Black in the starting lineup, but Black started the game on the bench. And Eric going up with it, does not get it to go, but draws a foul only six seconds in to the second half. And again, Holman does such a good job of setting up his teammates. That is why he is the all-time Spartan leader in dimes. Not a very eventful first half for Eric Black had a couple of early fouls. And is going 0 for 2 from the line on that trip. So Rochester really hoping to win this game to try to pad their position in the UAA. They are tied with Emery. Both their UAA record and their overall record has they get a bucket there and take the lead. That is Jared Seltzer. Led the team in scoring against the Spartans last time they played each other. He had 26 points against this interior Spartan D. Holman trying to create. There's that pull-up jumper. That one's good. So Jimmy Holman, he also had a quiet first half. Just four points for the senior captain point guard. But he is back on the board here with a quick one, and the Spartans have a 42 to 41 lead. Clark trying to defend, he was sandwiched there as Borst Smith tried to go around him and scores. Sam Borst Smith has been all over the scoring charts. Clark out to Eric Black. Now if that was David Black, that might have been a try at a three, but it's Eric, so he's not gonna try it. Ball up for grabs, eventually lands in the arms of Jacob Wittig. It is a defensive rebound for the Yellow Jackets. Long stretched right arm, Wittig scores at the other end. It's a nifty move. Stretching it out for a two point bucket. Rochester claims a three point lead. Their biggest lead was at five. About halfway through the first half, Holman tried to get the Yellow Jackets to bite on that Head fake three. Clark going into the teeth of the D. Oh, got a travel violation on Matt Clark. I think he wanted to kick it out to somebody. He had three blue jerseys swarming in on him, and the violation will give it back to Rochester. Spartans, in the first half, they did commit nine turnovers, which is not a terribly high number, but they do not want to see that number go anywhere north of 15 or so. As now we've got a short shot clock. It is at eight. Holman defending. Bart Smith shoots it with four to go, and it does not glow. Clark the rebound. Clark wants to go to the rim instead. Has to give it back up to Holman. Jimmy drew a crowd, Clark a contested three off the front end of the iron and the rebound is collected by the Yellow Jackets. Black defending up top, in and out, back tap is gathered there by Black, Zucker for three and that is short, the back tap on the second effort, Spencer Boyd using all of his six foot one frame and his got to be at least a two foot vertical, probably a lot more. That guy can just jump out of his shoes. He is an excellent offensive rebounder for his size. Spencer has his first field goal of the game. But well, still a one point upper hand for the Yellow Jackets trying to lay it in with Seltzer and he got the second one to go. If at first you do not succeed, try again. That's exactly what he did. And the Yellow Jackets lead is back at three. Little give and go. That's Eric Black posting up his man. Going right at Seltzer. That is no good. And Zucker is going to commit the foul on Jacob Wittig. So Zucker has two along with eight points. And the Spartans defending, they don't want to go down by two possessions, but trying to go all the way and hacked was Wittig. Boy, Wittig just got absolutely thrown around there as 
Black came right in at the last second. Well, that's a good hard foul. But it is Eric's third. So he will presumably take a seat in just a second when the reserve unit comes back in. Free throws on the way for Wittig, the freshman out of Manulis, New York. Has made it a two possession game. As Eric Black, Jimmy Holman, Spencer Boyd, Matt Clark, and company are going to take a breather. And making both free throws, Wittig has been solid from the stripe. Six points for Wittig, five point lead for Rochester. As Duckett working on the post, had to give it up. Alvarez out to Lavis. That's a long three. Sends it, goes in and out, and the Spartans have missed their last couple of tries from behind the three point line. A quick pull up two and a make. A nice looking one, Mac Montague. I, I tell you what, we haven't heard from him. And on the other end, they're going to say foul on the floor. The Spartans were begging and pleading for a and one right there. They are not going to get it as Alvarez with a right hand. I think they're looking for a continuation, but just a foul on the floor. Might have happened before the attempt by Alvarez there. Seven point game, Yellow Jackets in front. David Black for a quarter three, that is good. Well, the Spartans had gone a little bit awry from the three point line, but David Black, the big man, stretching the floor, making it a 51-47 game, going all the way to the hole, blocked by TJ Duckett. He flat out rejected that one, and here comes Javi. And too weak on a lay and could not quite get it up to the rim. And now that forced a missed. Forced Smith, normally very good finisher around the rim, but that one doesn't go. Your score sticking at 51 to 47. White tees up for three. It is off the mark. And Wittig ends up with it. More than five minutes gone by. Half number two. The 16 and six Rochester Yellow Jackets trying to Pad their lead, and that will help as Jacob Wittig with a left hand got it right in on the glass, as fundamental as can be, and extends their lead to six. He is now with eight. And another whistle. T.J. Duckett ended up on the floor, and I think he is going to pick up another foul. The Spartan faithful is uh, not seeing eye to eye with the officiating crew there, so it is number two on TJ. And if the Spartans are gonna continue to just have one big man on the floor, they are gonna have to keep their bigs out of foul trouble. So we will have a timeout on the floor. The Spartans will talk things over. Their deficit is six with 14.27 to go. We'll take a timeout here at the Horsburg Gymnasium. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Well, the Case Western Reserve men had a minimal lead, as minimal a lead as you could have at the half. They led 40 to 39, but it has been a 14 to 7 Rochester spurt since the start of the second half, and the Spartans will try to claw back into this game. Their deficit is six. And they're trying to keep it right there as getting the roll. How about that lay in his airs? Scores on three Spartan defenders to give the Rochester Yellow Jackets their biggest lead. It is now at eight. Lavis is in the corner, trying to make something happen. Here he comes on the give. David Black set up perfectly for three. Gets it to go. David Black, his second one from long distance. That will bring the Spartans within five. 
The three ball has really worked to their advantage and driving on White was Michael Mangan. White is, I believe, going to pick up another foul. That is the fourth Spartan foul, the second Michael White foul. Thanks to Michael Mangan, trying to go all the way in just a couple of short steps. So the blue and gold throw it away. Brendan O'Shea could not reach out for that pass from Mac Montague. And as uh, I was trying to say a couple minutes ago, and then I think we had a Alvarez bucket, Mac Montague has had a quiet game thus far. And you kind of just, we were waiting for him to, to come around. You know he's gonna, going to do it. He uh, had quite a scoring game against them last time. Zucker for three, buried it. Colin Zucker has the three-point shot working. He has 11 points now and brings the Spartans within a deuce. Seven minutes gone by. Kind of been a back and forth game, but thus far the Yellow Jackets have a slight edge. Stopping on a dime. Spencer got shoved around down there. They do not call a foul as Mangan puts it in and will make it 57 to 53. Spartans were looking for a charge. Holman, quick release, triple, no. Back tap, Black was working. And they're gonna say foul on the Yellow Jackets now. So now the Rochester bench unhappy. As you can see, the long three from Holman well behind the line. The foul is going to happen right about here. And I tell you what, I think Eric Black is probably a little lucky right there with a uh, behind the back play right there. But it goes against the Yellow Jackets. It is their third. Ball touches the Spartan bench. It will stay white basketball. Clark came to the ball, try to open himself up for some dribble penetration. And uh, another whistle here as Clark was trying to get to his left hand. So the foul is starting to add up here. Still nobody in particular foul trouble aside from Jared Seltzer. That's a big foul on a big man. So he has four. And the Yellow Jackets as a team have four. Clark had it rejected. It is out of bounds. They say Yellow Jacket ball, and Matt Clark is not a happy camper. We'll get another look at it. He's looking for some contact. There goes the ball. You don't too often see Matt Clark or any of the senior captains for Case Western Reserve get animated, but Clark really thought that he was going to the free throw stripe, as did many other onlookers in this building. And Zucker was guarding a penetrating guard for Rochester again. That was Michael Mangan. Boy, he just seems to be in the area of a lot of the tough fouls. Zucker with his third. Mangan, he has gotten involved in some plays, that's for sure. And ones that you remember at the end of the game. And he is off with the first try from the stripe. So the score will stay 57 to 53. David Black, Colin Zucker gonna sit. DJ Duckett is back in there. Javi Alvarez back in there. So they'll go one of two from the line. Mangan makes it a five point game. Mangan has five off of the jacket bench. Clark plants his feet for a triple. Bounced out of there and into the arms of Sam Borst Smith. That is Borst Smith's first rebound of the game. And he scores at the other end. Well, he's just a scoring machine. 
A one-dimensional scoring machine, but a scoring machine nonetheless. 15 points for him. Alvarez, all kinds of time. 4-3. It is short. They're going to try to get out to run. Holman is going to try to deny him. Didn't get the first try, but the second one is good. The follow has put the Yellow Jackets up by nine. Once again, their biggest lead. Spartans need some buckets here. Here comes Jimmy, and it's swatted away. Tucker Knox knocked it away, and a Spartan timeout off of the TJ Duckett bucket. So Duckett has four. The Spartans within seven, but they've got some work to do. We'll take a break. Everyone loves a comeback, right? Especially when that comeback is Queso Diablo from Qdoba. Full of spicy satisfaction to take you straight to Queso Bliss. That fiery, smoky sensation you've been craving has returned. Celebrate the comeback of Queso Diablo. Available now and for an infinite time. Only at Qdoba Mexican Grill. Well, the first half was a back and forth game. Second half is a little different at this point. A 23 to 15 Rochester spurt, and on the previous play, Spartans get a bucket here. It was a TJ Duckett two-handed lay-in. As again, we see a brilliant setup by Jimmy Holman, and he finds the open man. Right there to TJ, who has come up strong in his second season. He's uh, got a little bit of a lighter load <laughs> on, his, on his head. He must have gotten a haircut recently. And I, I tell you what, his old hairdo really did stick out like a sore thumb, but he's uh, putting on his hard hat here and going to work and got four points and the Spartans, his Spartans are down seven. Spartans led by as many as nine early on, but it's been quite a while since then. And a quick trigger triple and a connection. Who else but Sam Borst-Smith? 18 points for Sam Borst-Smith. He has had the Spartans number going back to the last time these two teams met. Holman, that is a three. It is no good and we're going the other way, it is a Spartan whistle. So the Spartans have some issues in the foul department. It is foul number three on the young sophomore. So Duckett in a bit of foul trouble, as is Eric Black. He's got three. And the Spartans have a 10-point deficit. Well, I'd say ultimately that's what you're more concerned about at this point as the two twins out of Avon Lake, David and Eric Black, into the game together for the first time. And that will help going forward, keeping the two of them on the floor at the same time. Ayers makes the front end of a one-on-one -on -one situation. So he will get one more try. Matt Clark also going to sit for Case, Western Reserve. Another sharp shooting specialist is inserted in there. It is Lavis. They could use his three-point services with a deficit of 12 now. As you approach the halfway mark here in half number two. David Black came to the ball, gave it up to Alvarez. Alvarez surveys the situation. Back to David up top. Alvarez is going to have to make something happen here. He comes at it, swatted away. Zach Ayers just rejected it. Nice setup as Black drew some contact. That will count, and the foul. Lavis the setup, and Eric Black the finish. He, with just his second field goal, will go to the line for a three-point play. And a lot of body contact there by errors, but that's how you're supposed to defend it. Don't put any of your limbs into the play. But Eric Black sold it well enough and he got the whistle. So he's now got five. What's been a relatively slow night for him, but again, he has three fouls and they lob 
from Wittig, and it is converted by Ayers. Great chemistry right there, and the Yellow Jackets get the two points right back. Not what you want to see if you're a Spartan fan. There is a whistle right here. Couple of opportunities for a stoppage in play. It stops with 22 on the shot clock, 9.43 in the game clock, and Tom Lunt and Ty Kovach having some words. And they're gonna say, we're going the other way. Well, Case had it, but in the scorer's book, it's gonna go as a turnover for Jake Lavis, but the Yellow Jackets gonna catch a bit of a break here. Spartans have to press, they need some pressure on the ball with a deficit of 11. They led by nine at one point, but it has been mostly Yellow Jackets in the second half. There's a miss, rebound by David Black. We will go the other way. Clark on the bounce to Eric Black and throws it down hard. So that will make a little bit of noise and get uh, a little bit of energy pumped back into this crowd, but still deflated for the most part with that deficit at nine, but you gotta take it possession by possession. In and out on the three-pointer, the putback attempt does not go. Knox cannot finish. The Spartans have had plenty of success from three-point range. Lavis will try it again. Good. Jake Lavis, boy, he gives them a couple of threes per night off of the Spartan bench, and that one pulls them to within half a dozen with under nine minutes to go now in the contest. Spartans now needing some stops as the shooting percentage of the Yellow Jackets has vastly improved over the last several possessions. And another three ball, that is Mac Montague, well, you knew you were gonna hear from him eventually. He was part of that great scoring duo that Rochester had the last time these two teams faced each other and a whistle. I believe Matt Clark was in the act and the foul is gonna be right there. The slap of the wrist from Sam Borst Smith. He has foul number two, six team fouls for Rochester. Senior guard, Matt Clark, probably your best free thrower. Just a hair over 81% for the year prior to tonight's action. Clark has 15 now, looking for 16. The Spartans need all the offense they can get, so every free throw plays an important role here. So we're back within seven. Slow it down, it's another open three. I tell you what, you give him room, and they're gonna make him. Tyler Knox has converted. Well, they didn't start out very good from three-point range, just four of their first 14, but lately, they've been able to knock him down as David Black coughs it up. It is another Spartan turnover. And the Yellow Jackets with a chance to make it as big a lead as 13. There is the three. It is not gonna go. Montague misfires. Lavis figuring out what he wants to do. He'll send it up top for Matt. Using that screen from Eric. Now a David Black three. And that one falls. So David Black now is in double figures. He's one of two Spartans on the floor with 10 points or more, making it a seven point game. The Spartans still in need of a couple of buckets as well as some stops. Wittig trying to go around the teeth of the D. Went down hard, but a whistle was drawn. We'll get another look at it. Was Zucker defending one on one and then Black came over to help and that's where the defensive collapse happened, Black knocked it away. But they also call the foul. So that is number four 
a personal foul on Eric Black, so he is going to have to be replaced. First free throw, no good by Wittig. Well, going back to that play, when Eric Black picked up the penetrator, you just you don't have as fast a guy to stick with the guard right there. I mean, you, you switch sometimes, but effectively it was a uh, not the, uh, the switch that they wanted. Not at that time anyways, as Clark tries to go to the rack and he was hacked. So Spartans going back to the line once again. Matt Clark has seen some minutes here tonight, some serious minutes for the fourth year man from St. Louis, Missouri and St. Louis University High School. He's gonna have to chip back into this lead at the line as the third personal foul assessed to the total of Dylan Peretz, fourth year man out of Pound Ridge, New York and a six foot eight forward is still in the game. So Matt Clark will make it a 76 to 70 contest. Spartans do play in some high scoring affairs and we look to the mid upper 80s, maybe even the 90s by the time all is said and done. And how about that jumper? Boy, you just cannot defend it. Sam Borst Smith is just feeling it from all over the place. Give him 20 points now. And he is just in his third year, so he'll be back. Clark, a uh, corner triple. It is a little short, up for grabs. Who's gonna get it? I think the Spartans get it back. It is David Black, way short. Too much of the front end of the iron and not enough of the back. Sean McConnell trying to get his guys to get organized defensively because his team needs a couple of stops. Defensively, they've been flying all over the floor, but the Yellow Jackets have had an answer as the soft touch provided by Dylan Peretz. He has now contributed six and the lead back to 10 for the Rochester Yellow Jackets. David had to give it up, Zucker creating. Holman, a long triple, sends it, no. Offensive board, Duckett gets it back out to Clark. Thought about the three, lost the handle. They're gonna come crashing right in front of the scorer's table. And it will remain Spartan basketball. So time of the essence. Spartans have some ground to cover with not much time to work with. But the good news for them is the three ball has been falling. Clark is one of those three point shooters. He is now posting up and drawing a crowd out to Jimmy Holman with 12 to shoot. Here comes the Duckett screen. Sucker in the paint. Right-handed floater gets the teardrop to go. Colin Zucker's had himself a good offensive night. 13 points for him. Brings his Spartans to within eight, but they still have a pretty steep hill to climb against this 16 and six Yellow Jacket team. And Borst Smith has been all over the floor, had to give it up there. Holman took it away. The Yellow Jackets turnover. Clark head faked that three. Wittig stayed home on it. Now Jimmy wants to use that screen. That's your best pick and roll situation. Duckett is posting up and he was fouled from in front. That is Sam Borst Smith. Disappointed that he picked up his third personal foul. And his teammate Dylan Peretz with his three fouls will be replaced. Forrest Smith stays on the floor and you sacrifice the foul trouble for the scoring that he provides you. Spartans within eight, TJ Duckett trying to make it within seven. And he'll get another free throw as TJ now five points and he will need six. 
Duckett an even 50% premier. Prior to the game tonight, give him six and he will make both tries. This is still a very manageable game and a manageable deficit if you're the Spartans, but this is what you cannot afford as the foul is gonna be called. Spartans were looking for a travel there as Seltzer planted his feet, I think. Well, definitely some contact, but they were looking for the travel before he went up for it. Seltzer back to the line, fourth year man, Berwyn, Pennsylvania and Conestaga High School. Made it an 81 to 74 game. The Yellow Jackets have two captains listed on the roster and Seltzer is one of them. So it's back to an eight point game. Yellow Jackets taking care of business from the charity stripe. And not much time for Case Western Reserve to try to make a run here. As it is Clark, Jimmy Holman, Javi Alvarez, TJ Duckett, and David Black as Clark connects on another three-pointer. Clark just leaped right into a shot and found a good one. Still make it a five-point game, but that will help. Clark has really had a career night here on Senior Day. Knox taking a look. Oh, there's a beautiful give and go. Excellently done. Jacob Wittig received it from Knox. Perfect chemistry right there. And the Rochester lead has gone to seven on this beautiful play, which will lead us into a timeout. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables, along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216 707 300 or visit us at hotelsclevelandclinic.com or on Facebook. So glad you could join us here on Friday evening. Double dose of Spartans basketball. The Spartan women fell earlier tonight to the Rochester Yellow Jackets. They hung around, as are the Spartan men, but they have a little bit of work to do. As this uh, most recent highlight that's a Zucker lay-in on the run has brought us to where we stand at 84 to 77. Still enough time for the Spartans to make a run, but you definitely do not want to take anything for granted here. Because with each miss on the offensive end and with each uh, stop that you do not get on the defensive end, each one becomes magnified. And the Spartans have some ground to make up for. Clark trying to create a shot. Here he comes, left-hander, lays it in. A nice little scoop shot. Matt Clark has now 20 points. He has done that a couple of times this season as a scoring machine for the Spartans. It is a five-point game, but they're looking to turn up the defensive pressure. As the Yellow Jackets now trying to intentionally slow things down here and milk that clock for all it's worth. That can work to the Spartans' advantage because when you slow things down, you start to get out of your, your zone as another three. Sam Borst-Smith stopped right in his tracks, put his foot on the gas pedal, went zero to 60 in three seconds and buried another triple. He's got 23. David Black. Long ball, good. David Black has hit a couple threes from that spot on the floor, and how about the three-point shooting for both teams? That is now 16 three-point shots for the Spartans. They have tried a long ball nearly 40 times. That is two-thirds of their field goal attempts coming from three-point range. They have some three-point fever 
here in University Circle. Shot clock at three, shot clock at two. It does not go, but the Jackets get it back on the back tap the other way. Anytime you try to tap it, you want to tap it away from the rim to try to find a teammate, and that is exactly what Rochester did. They will keep it alive at 15 to shoot. Duckett defending. Mangan trying to score on Duckett, and nothing TJ could do. It is a Michael Mangan finish at the rim in a seven-point game. That's where we are with about 91 seconds to go. Again, we'll go to a timeout, but this Mangan play was excellently done. Nothing TJ Duckett could do. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Well, the Spartans have 91 seconds, and it is a do-or-die situation for them as they are hoping to avoid dropping their fourth straight. Trying to get win number 11 on the year against these Yellow Jackets of Rochester. If they can make a couple threes and get a couple stops, then we've got a ball game, but we've got a three-possession contest as Holman fires for three. And it is no good. Big miss there. Errors. A big rebound for his team. Holman and Alvarez, the press, they get it across. Spartans were trying so desperately for a steal, but they will have to settle into the half-court offense, and the Yellow Jackets will probably get it down to about 50 seconds. As Wittig trying to take as much time off the clock as possible and a step back to Seltzler knocks it down making it a nine point game and a backbreaker for the Spartans squad as Clark gets the roll he will go and one foul is going to be against Seltzler and I believe he is fouled out so look at Clark doing work well away from the rim with the left hand just finger rolls it in there so the Spartans are not going away yet. It is a seven-point game. Clark could make it six. So Jared Seltzer has fouled out with 10 points, and he has been a real beast on the boards for them also. So he is done for the evening, and he gets a standing O from the well-traveled Rochester cheering section. Clark has had himself quite a night. 22, make it 23. Timeout Spartans. So we are not done yet, but Case still has a thing or two to do with 47 and a half seconds to go. We'll be back. Everyone loves a comeback, right? Especially when that comeback is Queso Diablo from Qdoba. Full of spicy satisfaction to take you straight to Queso Bliss. That fiery, smoky sensation you've been craving has returned. Celebrate the comeback of Queso Diablo. Available now and for an infinite time. Only at Qdoba Mexican Grill. Well, Case Western Reserve has narrowed the gap to six. But as you can see, time is of the essence. They're in kind of a unique situation here because if you don't want to, you don't have to play the foul game. Although if you don't, you'll get the clock, you'll get the ball back with 17 and a half seconds or so on the clock because you know that the Yellow Jackets are going to milk it down. Somewhere amidst those white uniforms is Sean McConnell towards the bottom of the picture. He is trying to drop a three-point play, and we saw a couple of Spartan alums in there and right there in the middle of that shot. That is Connor Adele. He was one of the big men for Case Western Reserve over the years as a starting true center. And uh, the type of player that he was, the Spartans could use because they've got a couple of post players but no real true centers on this team as they've gone with a much smaller lineup throughout the course of the year. 
Well, they get it in. Ayers has it. They need a foul. Yeah, it doesn't look like they are going to foul. Now they hack him as Michael Mangan got all the way to about a fourth court. 37.8 ticks to go. John McConnell was just telling his team, try to get the, get the foul and stop the clock. So they send a respectable shooter to the line. It is Michael Mangan, 72 percenter, and he has really been in the midst of a lot of close plays at the rim. He has just been around the ball all game long. Quite a bit of time came off of the clock for the Spartans. He made the first one look easy. Mangan has nine. This would be 10 to make it an eight point game. Nothing to it. 93 to 85, Spartans still down a bunch. And Clark lays it in with a left hand. Still a six point game and they have to foul and they do. It is Montague going to the line. Zucker picks it up. Sounds like the fourth personal foul for Zucker but he got to keep him on the floor because he is a three point specialist. Montague eight points been a relatively quiet night for him. He averages 11. And you gotta give credit to Rochester because they take care of business at the charity stripe. David, take it out. Make your sideline cut. Get on the Percentage side. from the line has been outstanding. Don't let it slow us down. For the Yellow Jackets who have pushed the lead to three possessions. And Montague is now in double figures. He comes off the floor. Luke Flakertsy putting on some length to the defensive unit. Clark almost lost it. Now Holman back over to Matt. Tees it up for a triple no. Duck at time that rebound well. Cleans up the miss. And again, we get the deficit back to six, but now only 15 and a half seconds to go. We'll get a good look at the offensive rebound. Clark has been so good from three, and Duckett has been very good on the boards, but still a ways to go. So another timeout is called. We'll be back in a minute. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables, along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4. Or visit us at hotelsclevelandclinic.com or on Facebook. Well, still a ways to go, but the Spartans not going down lightly, doing everything in their power to keep their hopes alive. As they have led by as many as nine, but that was in the early going of the first half, and then really ever since that point, it has been a uh, contest that Rochester has been in control of. They were able to put their staple on this game and have gone on a big spurt here in the second half. And have gotten their total up to 95 as a quick whistle. No time comes off of the clock. So Borst Smith with his fourth foul. Spencer Boyd comes off of the floor. Spartans subbing defense for offense here as David Black has re-entered. All three-point shooting specialists in the game now for Case Western Reserve. Zucker's not gonna be able to get a three off. Holman had it tipped away. That's an excellent steal. Yellow Jackets just took it right out of there and Clark the foul, 6.8 to go. 
That's pretty much going to seal the deal. I'm not sure who it was that stuck a hand right in there on Holman, but just straight up took it right out of there, and they were off to the races. Michael Mangan back of the line. Second personal foul for Clark as he had to foul from behind. It was almost a lay-in by Rochester. Two good free throws. And this University of Rochester team well on its way to going to 17 and six and will try to take a lead over Emery depending on what they do tonight. Holman for three, that's good. So Jimmy Holman continues his three-point shooting on a rampant pace as a five-point game and 1.8 to go and a timeout taken by the Yellow Jackets. They couldn't get it in in time. The Spartans still down five. We're almost done with this one. Stay with us. Inspired by the 60s, Dave's Cosmic Subs is spreading love around the world one sub at a time. Voted the best in Cleveland, Dave's Cosmic Subs uses only the freshest ingredients all wrapped in the history of rock and roll. Dave's Cosmic Subs are perfect for any occasion, especially your next Spartan Athletics gathering. Visit Dave's Cosmic Subs Coventry or call 216-320-0330 for delivery. There's only one legendary sub, and that's Dave's. Back here at the Horsburg Gymnasium, we are very close to a conclusion in this one. But you have to give this team right here a ton of credit for staying with it. They never panicked, never took themselves out of the game mentally. They stood strong and have done a lot and accomplished a lot to keep this deficit at five right now. Been a magnificent night for them shooting the ball from the three-point range, but the volume of three-point shooting has been off the charts for the Spartans. So they will need, once again, another immediate foul. And a reach in as Alvarez reached in on the inbounder. And that was the right. <laughs> Only thing they could do there there's still some time to work with. But the Spartans are out of timeouts. So they'll have to go the length of the floor with 1.8 to go. Now they are going to converge. Alvarez, I believe, reached in on the inbounder, and it looked like we were going to shoot some Rochester free throws, but one way or another, depending on what Emery does here tonight, Rochester will now be 10 and 2. They'll be 17 and 6 overall in 23 games. The Spartans will fall to 10 and 13, and the conference record not quite where they would like it to be at 3 and 9. As once again going to the stripe, it is Michael Mangan. He has done the bulk of the ball handling late in this half. We'll make it 98. Spartans have played in a number of 100 plus point contests. And he makes twice. So let's see what they do with it. David Black is going to inbound. Gonna find Matt Clark who will Tee it up for three, and that will be it. So the Spartans fall. It is their fourth straight loss. They will fall to a 10 and 13, and the Yellow Jackets will improve to 17 and 6. So we'd like to send a big thanks to the entire the broadcast crew, everybody behind the scenes doing a fantastic job. 